name's Ashley and I'm an educator at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Today we are going to be doing a little workshop on architecture. We actually offer an architecture workshop at the Cathedral for school groups that visit and in that workshop um, kids work in teams in order to be able to create some kind of structure inspired by the Cathedral. So we're going to explore the architecture, kind of the, the building design and um, pieces, historical influences, and structural elements, all of those things of the building today. And we're going to talk about some materials you could use to build a structure of your own, whether you want to build a cathedral, uh, a home, an apartment, a moon base, it's totally up to you. So some of the materials that you can use, pretty much all the materials are things you probably already have lying around, whether it's toilet paper and paper towel tubes, um, cardboard boxes that I've broken down that I've been getting packages in. It would be good to have an adult help you with that. The cardboard can be tough to cut through. You can use plastic uh, fruit containers. We have plastic water bottles as well. Um, we have cardboard that's a little easier to cut from cereal boxes and snack kind of boxes. Those are really great. And then just paper as well. Construction paper, um, computer paper, whatever kind of paper you have is really wonderful. And then the basic kind of construction things, which are tape, whatever kind of tape you have, you can make it work, you know, scissors and glue. I'm using tacky glue. It's a little bit stronger uh, than Elmer's, but you know, use what you have um, and get creative with it. So the cathedral started to be built in 1892, which is over 125 years ago. But the architecture that inspired the cathedral is from hundreds and hundreds of years ago from the Middle Ages. The cathedral is inspired actually by two different kinds of architecture, one called Romanesque and one called Gothic. Now, Romanesque architecture is all about rounded arches. So if you took a piece of paper and you cut a long strip, and you just gave it a little gentle curve, this is our rounded arch. Now, if you wanted to put a rounded arch onto your base, your base switch, cardboard is a good, it's a good base. All right, you wanna have it stand. So, I wanna fold the ends to give it little feet. Take a little glue, put it on the feet. Let's see. And so this is our rounded arch, a very classic Roman shape where they would make aqueducts with this for all kinds of buildings. And this uh, shape is extremely popular in architecture up to the Middle Ages and, you know, it's still used today. In Gothic architecture, people really loved pointed arches. Right? So we make this rounded shape and we put a little point in it. And so they're more triangular. And it actually is a bit of a stronger arch. Triangles are stronger shapes than circles, especially in the case of buildings. All right, so we have Romanesque and Gothic. And so my building, just like the cathedral, is gonna have Romanesque elements and it's gonna have Gothic elements. So if you wanted to make what we call a barrel vault, which is kind of like a bunch of rounded arches connected together, one thing you could use is kind of half of a water bottle. So if you cut the water bottle long ways and flip it over, you have this kind of barrel vault shape. And in the cathedral, uh, you see kind of vaulting, but of a different kind in the nave. So in the nave of the cathedral, we have ribbed vaulting. So unlike barrel vaulting, this year we use a lot of round arches, barrel vaulting has a lot of pointed arches that crisscross, they kind of hold hands, they support each other, and they make this really intricate ceiling, as you can see in photos of the cathedral way that you could make a vaulted ceiling instead of using a water bottle is by using construction paper again or any kind of paper you have. So you want to once again give your kind of vault feet, right? So you can glue it down. And if you just bend it like this, there you go, you have a barrel vault. If you take it in the middle, give it a little bit of a point, you have something a little bit closer to what the ribbed vaulting of the cathedral looks like. And I can cut this to size and glue it down. So 
So you might notice that I like to put my glue in a dish and then use like a popsicle stick or a brush to spread it down. It just is a little more exact application. All right. Now at the cathedral, and our building is made of really heavy limestone and granite. Um, but our walls are really thin because we have these gorgeous stained glass windows, which are another hallmark of Gothic architecture. So with the walls being compromised by having uh, these windows in them, because glass cannot bear weight, this heavy stone, we have to have something else to support the building. And that thing is called a buttress. So buttresses help counteract the weight of a building. So um, you can see them from the outside of the building. The cathedral actually has them inside and outside. But usually they're outside. Sometimes they're called flying buttresses, right? They kind of jump out from the side of the building. Sometimes they're very close. They kind of hug more like the cathedral's buttresses. So the way that I'm making a buttress today is using corrugated cardboard. So if you take a box from a package and you peel off the kind of smooth layer of cardboard, you will see inside this ribbed kind of bumpy corrugated uh, board. And that is much more flexible than if you had left um, the smooth part on. Um, so once you take the smooth part off, you can really do some interesting things with this. One of those things is that you can make a buttress. So I'm gonna cut mine into two. Because the building is all about symmetry. So what we do on one side, we should do to the other side. stands tall is really use of columns and piers. So in Romanesque architecture, people really love simple cylinders. If you need something a little smaller, right, because the tubes are a set size, you can just roll up paper. Now it can be tricky to get a tube like this to stay put on uh, your, your surface. So what I do, once again, is give it feet, but in a little bit of a different way. So I'll cut kind of around shallow cuts around one of the edges of the column. Right? And then you have these feet that you can use and you can put down with either tape or glue. I'll use tape today. I really love tape. I feel like you can never use enough tape in your projects. Gothic architecture, people really start to think about long lines um, and start to get a little bit more ornate and decorative. So in the cathedral, for example, you'll see these more Romanesque single columns in the high altar area. Um, but in the rest of the building, especially in the nave, you're going to see these heavy piers, which go all the way down to the bedrock of the building. They really give it a lot of strength, but also give it a lot of um, kind of beauty, I think. So the columns aren't just one column, but they're made of columnettes. So lots of little columns surround this kind of center pier and give you a really interesting decorative element. So what I would do with this is continue to make my, um, like these little columns, columnettes, and I could glue them around. You want to tape them and then glue them. The last thing that I want to talk to you about today that we have at the cathedral is our dome. So at the cathedral, we have this really amazing 100 foot in diameter dome. And this dome is made of a special tile called Guastavino tiles. Now, the way that the dome is made, you'll see in the photo um, that I'm going to show, is that uh, the tiles are layered in concentric circles, which means we have circles and circles and circles and circles, and they kind of go in until they form this dome shape. Now, that's a little difficult to recreate at home. You might be able to try with paper mache or something like that. Um, but what I did, now this is big, so it's not gonna go on, on my, my building, but I cr uh, kind of crossed these arches and glued them in the center point I did three in this case. Gave them feet so that they would stick down. Um, and you'll see it creates this very round half sphere kind of dome shape. So for decorating, right? Because our cathedral is lots of stone, granite and limestone, but it's also so much more. There's sculpture everywhere. There's paintings and tile mosaics. There's so much decoration. And you can bring some of that into your building as well. So maybe you can use you know, pieces of tissue paper or wrapping paper or even magazines. You can cut out and collage design for your building. You have crayons, markers, or paint. That works too. And you can even scavenge around the house since maybe you have some extra buttons in your sewing kit 
or uh, you happen to have some popsicle sticks lying around, you can make some interesting shapes with those on top of your building. There's really no limit to what you can do with this kind of project because it's all about just using what you already have. I want you to look at your house, you know, what shape is your ceiling? Is it flat? Is it round? Is it pointy? You know, what material is your floor? Right? Look at where you live in your neighborhood. You can take some pictures maybe for inspiration. When you get home, you can make a building inspired by what you've been seeing these days. So we at the Cathedral would love to see what you make. If you're inspired, please tag us and comment um, with any ideas you might have for creating an architectural kind of recyclable masterpiece.